You're listening to episode 54 of the Master Your Mind, Business, and Life podcast. Today's guest is so full of light, inspiration, and is so down to earth. Liz Carlisle and I got real about life, motherhood, and she even gave me a breakdown on CBD oil. Liz is a TEDx speaker and the founder of Motherhood Unstressed. Now, while you're listening to today's episode, if you feel like something resonates with you, I encourage you to share it with a friend or share it on your Instagram stories and tag me at MindBizLife. Sharing is the best way to get this podcast and this episode into the homes, cars, and earbuds of many. Thank you to everyone who has so far entered the Master Your Mind, Business, and Life one year podcast anniversary giveaway. If you enter to win, you will receive a massive bundle of goodies if you are the winner. I mean, we have a beautiful Seek the Joy bracelet from my friend Sydney Weiss from Seek the Joy podcast. Felicia Bender, you know, my favorite numerologist, is giving away signed copies of both of her numerology books. Mac Monroe from the Boss Builders is fueling your business with a bundle of his books. Norma Jean Belenke of Norma Jean Loves and the Stay Wild podcast is giving away one of her amazing tank tops. And Kamiko Love, the budget mom, is helping us get our finances right with her brand new financial planner. I'm also going to throw in a signed copy of my book, Mindful Love, Bite Sized Thought Nuggets to Fuel Your Life. So if you haven't entered yet, head over to Instagram and find us at, at MindBizLife. Look for the official giveaway post and follow the guidelines to enter. The winner will be selected at random, and I'll announce it on Instagram tomorrow. Whew. Okay, that was a lot. <laughs> I'm just so stoked to share this week's episode with you and introduce you to Liz. You know what to do. Tune in, turn it up, let's go. You're listening to Master Your Mind, Business and Life. Conversations with everyday world shifters, truth seekers, and rule breakers. Here's your host, Lauren Smith. Hey everyone, it's Lauren Smith. Welcome back to another episode. Today's guest is the founder of Motherhood Unstressed, podcast host, and TEDx speaker, Liz Carlisle. Liz, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining me today. Oh, thank you so much for having me on, Lauren. I am so happy to be here. Oh my goodness. I gained a great glimpse into your journey through your website. And I love how on your about page, it says, my story is not particularly unique. And while I think it's definitely unique, it's also on a, a woman and mom level really relatable. So will you share with us a little bit about your journey and what sparked motherhood unstressed? Yeah. So it was really, it was a long time coming, you know, and I think life happens to us. We go through things, everybody goes through things and you don't really think about it. You just, you're getting through it and then you're on to the next thing. And that happened to me when I became a new mom, I struggled immensely. And I think all moms do. I mean, you are thrown into just kind of a, a battle zone where you don't really know what to do. You've got some help, but you're really just figuring it out day by day. And so I was going right. through that and kind of just, you know, it was all shock and awe. And then I got through it and it was years later, I was at work and I decided to blog about it. I decided to talk about how hard it hit me and how, you know, I had to really pull myself out of, I, I wouldn't say postpartum depression, but definitely some blues going on. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, you know, it'd be a cathartic experience to write about it. So I did. And, you know, I thought maybe my mom would read it and that would be great. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I put it out on Facebook and, and so many women, you know, women I'd kind of just known through, you know, the online space or I'd known in high school or college who had had babies, they were reaching out to me and saying, oh my God, thank you for writing about this. Thank you for talking about this. Because I feel like everyone is out there just putting on, you know, a picture perfect life on social media. You know, we all want to look like we've got it figured out and we know what we're doing. And that's just not the case. It's not, it's not real life. Mm -mm. So that response prompted me to say, okay, this is, this is something, I don't know what it is, but this is something. Um, and so I started to submit my blog posts to different online uh, magazines like Elephant Journal, Red Tricycle, and they got picked up. And I was like, wow. okay, I'm this, doing something. Yeah, right. I did, and it was just like a process of following the whispers and being like, okay, this feels right. This doesn't, this is working. This isn't. And, you know, from there, I decided to go to the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, which is the online health coaching school, which I just loved. I didn't know if I wanted to be a health coach, but I wanted to help 
you know, through my own experience, whatever that meant. Um, and it was through there, you know, you're exposed to so many amazing lectures. And I was like, Oh, I want to talk to these people. I want to interview them. How am I going to interview them? I just have a blog. So I decided to start a podcast. And, um, and that was kind of the real beginning of the brand motherhood unstressed and where I saw it going and who I wanted to help, you know, who I was speaking to, you know, why was I doing this work? You know, because it's completely unpaid at the beginning. So it's like, okay, well, why am I doing this? Well, it was my passion. You know, it was like, using my life experience to uplift others. And it's been that for a little over two years now. And here we are. Wow. I love that. And I love that it started as you just blogging about your experience because man, it's so true that even when I had my oldest daughter, she, she's turning 10. I feel like the resources that were available 10 years ago, unless you went into a bookstore, like mm-hmm. there wasn't that much on the, on the internet to, no I mean, there were, you know, parenting blogs, how to do this, how to do that, but nothing on the relatable scheme. And I can exactly relate to that moment of having those mommy blues and being like, I thought, I thought I was going to be better at this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's a feeling that I think so many of us can relate to. And I love that you put this out into the space and you're really just holding a space, um, to help moms navigate this journey. And I think a lot of my girlfriends who are moms, which is a large majority of them, they've continuously put themselves last. And when I think about it even more, I say it out loud, I think this actually extends generations before us as well. So how do you think that a busy mom can start to put herself first? Because that is something that we all need to start doing. Oh, 100%. 100 and I literally just gave a TED Talk on this subject about you know, moms being okay with being selfish. And I use the word selfish kind of as a joke because that's what we feel like. You know, we Mm. feel like, oh, we're taking away from our children and our families and everything that needs to get done in my work. And, you know, the list is so long, but it's so crucial. You know, if anything that you remember from this conversation audience, uh, remember that you are worth the time, the five to 10 minutes a day that you could take away and, and, fill your cup and nurture yourself and nurture your inner child that needs just as much as much attention and love as your actual children and husband, which let's face it, they're kind of like little babies too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It's, it's so true. So I think the first thing for moms listening to this is just to bring in the awareness of, of how you're doing at this. You know, are you taking the time to meditate, to do yoga, to journal, to connect back with who you really are, to, to go for a 10 minute walk? Are you doing those types of things that make you happy? And, yeah. and most likely you're probably not, you know, at least not consistently. And so then carving out a time during your day, that's non-negotiable. Maybe it's when everyone's still asleep, or maybe, you know, it's, it's when you can just grab those moments and steal those moments to fill your cup and to just connect back with who you really are. Because that to me is the ultimate game changer in life. That is when you can enter a room, whether you're at work or at home and really be present and really be there and really give love and give attention and give, you know, this, this part of yourself that you've, you've been really unable to give because you haven't been filling your own cup. Yeah. Um, and that's really what it is. It's like your family knows if you're really there, if you're really listening, you know, your kids know, like we all know, <laughs> they know if you're really there. And so to be really there, to be the best mom that you want to be, you know, you've got to take care of yourself first. And so I think if you can reframe it like that, it's a lot more palatable to moms. Yeah. It's a lot of self-compassion. So when you mm. go out to Walgreens at 10 o'clock at night for toilet paper and you also <laughs> see that candy bar sitting there, grab that candy bar and you sit in that Walgreens parking lot for 10 minutes and eat it by yourself without sharing a bite. <laughs> that right. can I mean, be self-love. <laughs> whatever. Right. And, and like sitting quietly with yourself, no music. Yes. No oh my gosh. Like that, that's spiritual. I mean, mm. it really is like that really settles you back into who you are and connect back because so often everything is a distraction. I mean, we are going at a million miles an hour. There's so much dying for our attention, but when was the last time that you really gave yourself any attention? Right. Oh man, that's such a good question to reflect on. And I'm sure there's probably moms listening right now who maybe they're a new mom with uh, you know, a, a newborn baby, or maybe they have crazy toddlers running around. They're like, yeah, right, Liz, right. how can I create time for myself? Like I can't even go to the bathroom without a tiny <laughs> army barging in, but it really is. It's almost like you have to 
make space in your schedule. If, if that's like your crazy life right there. So like make five times, put it on your schedule for 10 minutes every day. To it's true. That. Yeah. And oh. even if it means like setting an alarm for 5am, like nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to do that, but you do it. And then you see how you feel after you've done, you know, whatever 15 minutes of self-care and see how much different, like how different your day is. Like it's, mm. it's just remarkable. Yeah. I'm personally one who I, I like waking up before my kids. Um, mm-hmm. even if it's 15, 20 minutes before them, because if I wake up straight into mom mode, it just <sighs> puts me in this like really raging B mode. You know, I'm like, saying, oh. yeah, like I, I just need that morning quiet. And I used to think that my mom was a morning person when I was younger, you know, I'd wake up for <laughs> she'd already be awake and have her tea and, you know, watching the news. And I would always just have this picture of my mom being this, she loves to wake up early, you know? And now as an adult, I'm like, nope, my mom loved her silence in the morning. Yes. Like, that was her time. And I didn't realize that as a child, mm. but as an adult, I was like, I see you, mom. I see yeah. You. Yeah. What is it? Cause my mom was kind of the same way. Like she was always, you know, she was running the household. She was taking care of business and she always got her workout in. And I was like, Oh, she just likes to work out. But talking to her now, it's like, no, she was like, Lizzie, I needed that time for myself. If I didn't do that, I would be absolutely insane. So I'm just kind of curious. And I'm going to ask the question to you is why do you think the older generation of women took care of themselves? They had these self-care practices, whereas women now our generation we're like scrambled and we don't think that we can do that. Do you think that like, I really wonder if it's social media that has like technology has just pushed us. I mean, I I wonder if like in our mom's generations, you had, you know, magazine, television, radio, right? So Mm -hmm. maybe comparing yourself to like the mom on TV was a little bit more obtainable than comparing yourself to the mom on Instagram who continuously has it all together all the time. Because I I sometimes think that TV moms, like if you look at these portrayed roles through history, these women are all over the place. Like you have, <laughs> you have Kitty Foreman from like the, that 70s show, who <laughs> the perfect 70s mom, right? And you, and you see it that she doesn't have it all together all the time, um, right. but she's working on it. And then you have someone like, I don't, you could go like as extreme as Roseanne Connor, who mm. really doesn't have it together, but loves her family fully. So I wonder if social media really just has a play in that as well as it has it tricked our minds I'm not sure I think it has to be because that's really to me the only you know the biggest change that's happened from our moms to us is social yeah. media like yeah. it's got to be that but it's just I think it's just an epidemic of burnout you know you everywhere you look women are they have anxiety they've they've got stress you know marriages are ending and you know marriages have always been you know 50 50 but still it's like I feel like there's a lot more pressure on women just from talking to people at at drop-off than there ever was growing up. I agree. And I think a lot of times we put that pressure on ourselves to be Mm. the perfect mom. I have totally dropped (laughs) ever trying to be the perfect mom. I used to strive for that so hard. And now Mm -hmm. I am picking my battles every day. Like, Oh, you know, you're not eating dinner tonight because you don't like this. I used to just be like, okay, you're going to sit there. You're not going to eat. And I'm like, what what am I doing? Telling my kid they're not going to eat. Okay. I'll make you a peanut butter and jelly. It's just a battle that I want to pick that night. You know, like in this world with so much chaos on, like you really have to be choosy and being perfect is just not obtainable. (laughs) Especially when we all have a different version of perfect. Well, exactly. We've all been raised with different life experiences. We've experienced different things. Like we've been exposed to different teachers and mentors along the way. Like, yeah, we're going to be different. And if you don't do things exactly like Susie Q down the road, that's okay. (laughs) Okay. It's so okay. And I love my mom squad because I think that we're all different, Mm. you know, in like very different ways. And that just means that we're all bringing something different to the table as well. Yeah. I love that. And I think this flows really nicely into my next question because we always hear about balance. We're all striving for the best way to balance motherhood and pursuing our passions. Is there a secret recipe on how to do this? Because you really seem to rock it. (laughs) <laughs> that's, that's the key, right? Seem. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> no, no way. No way. So I think the best thing I heard on balance, uh, especially when it comes to working moms is that 
it's, there's no such thing, you know, there's really no such thing. And sometimes you have to go hard into your work. Sometimes you can go hard into your family and really focus on that, but to accept that there's going to always be an ebb and flow and to not beat yourself up over it is the key to success and is the key to sanity. You know, at the end of the day, it's, it's knowing that this is just temporary, like everything else, like everything with your children and life, it's all in flux. It's all temporary. So to do the best you can do and to have grace and that self-compassion again, you know, bringing that back up is, is just the key. And, and to not get so wound up, like, Oh, I, you know, I missed the baseball game or oh, I didn't help with this homework tonight. I'm a terrible person. Stop, just stop because you're going to be there tomorrow to help. You know, you're doing the best that you can. And, uh, I think it's really, we fail ourselves when we, when we speak harshly to ourselves. So really treating ourselves like, again, like a little child, we need to be kind and, and, you know, those automatic negative thoughts, those ants that are constantly running through our minds are killers. They're killing our, our health and, um, just our being. And you know, life is too short. That's what I come back to. You talked about like the chaotic world that we're in. Life is too short. You don't know if you are going to be here tomorrow. So enjoy life, find joy, find bliss every single day. Mm, I love that. I really, uh, I have, I've had this mom guilt all summer you know, kids home, um, trying to, to balance, here we go back again, balance work and, and being an attentive mom. Um, and my oldest daughter, she's almost 10. She made this comment to me of like, Oh, you're working again. You know, like that, like again. And I wasn't even working at the time. Like I was, I think I was like buying her school shoes or something online. Oh my God. (laughs) It appeared that I was working, right. I was on my, I was on my computer. So that is perception Mm -hmm. is reality. Um, so I made this promise to myself, school starts next week. And I was like, every day I picked them up at three 15. So every day from three 30 until five, I've made this personal commitment to myself. that I'm not going to be on my phone. Mm. I'm not going to look at it. I'm not going to touch it. If someone calls me, they're going to have to wait till five Oh one for me to call them back. Um, I've, I've exited out just because that's the first 90 minutes of my day and my kids day when they're home that I want to be attentive to them. I want to help with homework. If they don't have homework, we can go to the park, do something. And that way they know when they get home, mom's not working. Mom's here for you. I'm, I'm lasered in and focused. And this is the first year both of my kids will be in school all day. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be committed. I'm not going to work these crazy hours and then get frustrated when my kids interrupt me you know, while, while I am working, just like, Oh, give me a minute because that's not fair to them. Um, you know, and, and they don't, their little brains don't understand it. So I'm hoping that this will, I don't know, maybe help uh, balance is is a word that that we know isn't there, but is, is a way for me to kind of, you know, put my professional hat on and my mom hat on at different times. Yeah. And to really like hold boundaries for that. I mean, as so many women, you know, especially women, we, we feel like we need to do it all and be it all. So we diminish those boundaries, but yes, I love that. And it's just so practical and it's, you know, you, you explain it to your family and your friends and they get it. And I'm guarantee you they'll be supportive. Yeah. And speaking of that, I know it goes without saying that you're as busy as they come. So how do you stay grounded and focused when life really gets crazy? I think the key to that, because yeah, if I, if I don't put in some self-care practices, um, I'm all over the place and I get super stressed out really fast because everything is coming at me so quickly these days. But for me, the, the best thing I can do is to start my day off. Right. You know, they call it a miracle morning or they call it, you know, just, just self-care in the morning. That's what I have to do. I have to do it. So for me, that equals getting up at 5. AM when everyone is asleep, blessedly asleep, um, <laughs> And, you know, I, I down a glass of water. I do some simple yoga stretches like pigeon pose and forward fold and child's pose to really stretch out my back, which is, you know, it's, you know, so crickety after a long night of sleep. Um, and then I will meditate for a minimum five minutes, just connecting back, back to my breath, kind of scanning my body, seeing if anything's tight, seeing if anything comes up emotionally, like how am I feeling today? What's going on? And then from there, um, you know, maybe I'll go for a run or maybe, you know, I'll just get stuff organized for the day, whatever that will be. And then, you know, when my kids do wake up half an hour to 45 minutes later, like I'm good, you know, I have connected back to source. I've connected back to myself. I am fully present and aware. And for some reason, the day just seems to flow. If I do those things, like all, you know, the to-do list is a mile long, but everything seems to get taken care of. It's almost like you're expanding time when you can get settled in the morning. 
Mm. Have you always meditated or when did you incorporate that into your practice? You know, I've, I've dabbled in meditation since after college. Um, I've always, you know, especially I went through like a bad break, breakup from a college boyfriend and, you know, I thought my world was ending yeah. and I needed to do something, but I didn't know what. So, uh, you know, it was just by luck that I found a book on meditation. And so I kind of started doing it and it really helped. Like it really helped bring me out of that situation. So it was kind of when, you know, I was going through another tough time, another wave it was hitting me with the birth mm. of my son. I started to do it again because I remembered like, okay, this, this helped me before this helped me feel grounded and kind of like I had things figured out or that I could figure things out and I wasn't right. alone. I um, love that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of those things, you know, it happens, I think a lot when we get challenged in life, we really find out how strong we are and, and we find ways to cope. And some people find ways to cope that are unhealthy. I'm just lucky that I found meditation and it actually really worked for me and actually liked doing it most days. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think for any mom listening to this, you know, find, find the morning is really ideal for us. Let's be real because the kids are still asleep. Find that time to connect back, to get settled, to write down your goals, write down your affirmations, and then take on the day because otherwise it can be pretty scary and it can be really stressful and you know, nobody needs that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And sometimes I think people think when they hear the word meditation too, that has to be a guided meditation that you have to put on something and listen to it. But I, you know, the best way that was ever described to me is when you're in the shower and you're washing your hair and you know how you have like a million ideas come up or Mm -hmm. you're just like, Oh, I should do that. That's also a to those listening and don't know, like that is also a type of meditation where you are just connected to yourself. Yeah. That's really all it is. And I exactly. think sometimes people get confused by that. Oh well, yeah. I mean, you see, you know, images on Instagram or you see like the Headspace app, which is, you know, awesome. But at the same time, yeah, you can be at your car to red light and just start focusing on your breathing. That's yeah. a meditation. So, you know, funny. send yourself some love. Like imagine your heart opening up like a flower. Imagine you're breathing in this white golden light and it's cleansing all of your cells. And then when you breathe out, you're breathing out any anger or resentment or anything negative. And that's a meditation. And that's three minutes, maybe. And you're, and you're changing your cells on that level. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It is amazing. It's the power of the breath is so powerful guys. I cannot stress that enough, but while we're kind of talking about ways to cope, let's switch gears a a little bit and tell us about your CBD oil, because CBD Mm -hmm. is also a way to cope in a different way. Um, Will you tell us what CBD is for those who don't know? Absolutely. Yeah. So the whole brand motherhood unstressed, you know, is, is geared towards helping moms battle everyday stresses in life. And so when I thought, you know, I really want to come out with a product, I was looking at mushrooms and different things. It it just clicked. I was like, of course I would do CBD (laughs) because it's so great for stress and anxiety. And so to take it back, CBD is short for cannabidiol. And it's one of the over a hundred compounds in the hemp plant, which the hemp plant is, yes, it's from the cannabis plant. So it's very closely related to marijuana, but because it has less than 3% THC in it by law, um, it's hemp instead and can be shipped across state lines and now can receive, you know, loans from banks and everything like that because of the passage of the 2018 farm bill. Um, it's, it was taken off of the schedule one, um, as far as a a narcotic. Um, So CBD is just an incredible compound for balancing your body, for helping your body reach homeostasis. And how it does that is it works with your own endocannabinoid system. We all have an endocannabinoid system. Every mammal, your dog has one, your cat has one. Um, And so when that's out of balance, we can feel anxious. We can feel depressed. We can feel just not right. Um, and so our bodies already make cannabinoids. Um, you can make cannabinoids through exercise, through eating well, just for being a healthy person. And so a lot of people who don't, you know, take care of themselves or maybe just aren't producing enough cannabinoids as it is, they just don't feel happy. They don't feel they're like they're their best selves. And so when you supplement with CBD, uh, you're bringing in phytocannabinoids. And so you're helping your body feel balanced and right and healthy and happy um, naturally. And there's literally zero side effects from CBD. Um, now CBD and THC are just two of the most studied cannabinoids from the hemp plant, from the cannabis plant. 
Um, there's so many more that they're just now studying. These are just kind of the popular ones right now. So I'm actually really excited to see what else they, they come out with because every single day, more and more studies are showing how beneficial CBD is. And it's actually been shown to help with weight loss. It turns white fat cells to brown. And when your fat cells are brown, you can burn them for fuel. When they're white, it's kind of hard to convert. Um, It's actually a really good appetite suppressant that's been shown. Um, Obviously, so tremendous for anxiety, social anxiety disorder. They did a study where um, they gave these public speakers some CBD and then some a placebo, and the ones who had taken the CBD had massively lower rates of anxiety before wow. giving. I mean, it's just fascinating to me. Yeah. How does the motherhood and stress CBD oil differ than the others on the market? Well, I would say one of the most important things for us is, is working with farmers who are in the United States, who mm-hmm. are on organic farms. This is oh, crucial. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's crucial because um, the hemp plant is a phytoremedial remediator, which means it pulls toxins and metals out of the ground. Like they actually use them to clean up oil spills. So if you are on, I didn't know that. Yeah. It's, it's really amazing. Um, so even if the farm previously, you know, used pesticides, it's still going to be pulling that out of the soil. So our CBD is on farms that previously, you know, were doing organic hay and wheat and things like that. Um, so that was number one crucial. Another really important thing is we're third party tested which not everybody does. Um, And that's just showing that there actually is CBD and there actually is not a great amount of THC in our products. Um, So it's legal and it's actually, we're actually selling what we say we're selling. Um, And the third thing is, you know, it's, it's in a medically structured water, at least the tincture. And so that is just readily absorbable. Um, It doesn't taste great. I'm going to be honest with you. (laughs) (laughs) It's not all wonderful. It doesn't taste (laughs) But because it's in that medically structured water, you can put it in a smoothie or coffee, tea, whatever, and you'll still get the same benefit. Um, oh, I love that. Yeah. But the main thing is just that it's organic and USA grown. I mean, if, if you're buying something from Amazon, most likely it's not. And that's scary. Or a gas station. I always tell my friends, never, never, never buy CBD from a gas station. Oh, yeah. It's like buying an egg salad sandwich from a gas station. <laughs> like, you just don't do it. <laughs> I mean, why would you? No. <laughs> just things you say no to in life. <laughs> just don't do it's it. Self-care. self-care. Exactly. Oh, well, thank you for giving that us that little mini education lesson on, on CBD. Yeah. I think it's really important that our, our audience know that. What is the best way for our audience to connect with you further and even watch your TED Talk, which by the way, is amazing. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you. Um, probably the best way to connect with me is on Instagram at motherhood unstressed, or you can go to my website, motherhood Um, and I think for the Ted talk, you could just Google, um, Liz Carlisle Ted talk and it should show up. Oh, I love that. Liz, thank you so much for joining me today and sharing your light. I love your mission and I am so glad we were able to connect. Thank you so much for having me. And I would love to have you on the motherhood unstressed podcast. Oh, next. I'm there. You let me know my girl. <laughs> Yay, awesome. After I had this conversation with Liz, I spoke to my mom and asked her why she thought mom suddenly felt this pressure to be perfect and take on shame for just taking time for themselves. And she immediately said she thought social media was the culprit too. So I think Liz and I hit the nail on the head when it comes to generational motherhood differences. But, you know, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. So be sure to connect with me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at MindBizLife. And tell me what you think the generational mindset shift was within moms. And while you're at it, be sure to head over to this week's episode notes on MindBizLife.com, where I have linked with Liz's website and social channels and her TED Talk and her podcast. It's all right there for you. Go check it out. And one last reminder is to enter the one-year anniversary giveaway before it's too late. Of course, that is found on Instagram. I'll see you back here next week for another episode. But until then, remember, every level of life is an opportunity to grow. Be well, my friend.